Hey everyone, Adam here, Gun Overland. Uh, this week we're going to do a rig run around. Patrol's pretty much built now and ready to rock and roll for our big trip, so uh, it's reckon it's 98% ready to go. Hey everyone, Adam here, Gun Overland. Uh, this week we're going to do a rig run around. The patrol's pretty much set up now, ready for a big trip. So while we've got everything out camping at this uh, private property, we'll show you what we've got, how it's set up, and um, anything we might change in the future. So first up, it's a 93 GQ patrol, it's 4.2 turbo diesel. Uh, it's a DX, so bottom of the range, but we like that because less to go wrong no power windows no power mirrors vinyl floor easy to clean uh, it's simple reliable rugged and um, it's a good truck so uh, we've had it now for over 10 years we've done over 100,000 k's uh, most of that on big trips uh, remote trips and hard trips like Simpson Desert Cape York Fraser Island a couple uh, times Morton Island Strabo we've been Tassie in this, we had five weeks in Tassie. We've done Outback New South Wales, Outback Queensland, the Gulf of Carpentaria. So it's done some big trips. It's done a lot of little weekends too. And um, yeah, we love it. So let's start with, I suppose, under the bonnet. So like I said, it's 4.2 turbo diesel, uh, 315,000 k's on it now. Uh, Denko turbo, uh, three inch exhaust from Bodesert Exhaust, which I'm really happy with. There's another video if you want to see some of that. Um, ARB air compressor and front locker. Dual battery system. Uh, it's got a whole heap of new gear in here. So all the accessories have been changed. A uh, whole new water pump and cooling system on it, new radiator, uh, three core aluminium. I'll, um, I'll type in below who that's from, I can't remember, remember off. if it's Rad Radiators or somewhere else. Made in Australia though. Uh, new water pump, uh, thermostat, all the gaskets, hoses and belts are all been changed. New power steering system we've put in there, ready for the trip. Um, now the dual battery system, it's just one of those smart solenoids. It's nothing high tech, it's not like a Red Arc one because it's got it doesn't have a smart alternator, so it doesn't need that jump up in um, in volts, it just pushes through whatever's coming to the main battery. Um, what else we got? We've got a new clutch in it, we've got a Safari Tough clutch in it. Uh, there's a solar regulator under the bonnet. Uh, that's an MPP T1. We got the couple of tech uh, electronic rust preventer. Um, we've got all new brake system in there, so it's got a new booster, a new slave cylinder, same with the clutch, that's got new booster slave cylinder. Uh, what else we got? You've got a fuse box over here for all the accessories. It's running the uni filter, the oil based filters, where you clean them out and put new oil in them. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that, it's pretty easy to do, you don't have to do it too often. Every service we just flip it over though when it's not dirty. Uh, it's got the injector pump rebuilt, it's got a 10 mil pump on it uh, with a boost compensator, new injectors, new glow plugs, uh, and as you can see, because we do a lot of outback trips, you see a lot of zip ties and silicon under the bonnet, uh, and extra rubber, and that's to stop a lot of things rubbing and wearing through. So it might look a bit messy, some of it, but it, 
you know, in all the trips we've done, we've never had an issue, anything failing, anything rubbing through, anything arcing out. All right, the front end. So it's got a TJM bull bar. We bought this second end. Uh, we wanted a brand new ARB one, but they finished making a run. There was none left anywhere in Australia, uh, and they couldn't give us a time for a new one. So we tracked down a second end TJM one, which I reckon they look pretty good. We cut in the little tees for the high lift jack. We don't run a bottle jack. We just run the, the high lift jack for a couple of reasons. We might run through that on another video. We've got the bonnet guard, as you can see it does wear, there's bugs all sprayed all over it. That is from, hmm, I forget who, the Oscar? Is it Oscar? Oscam? Maybe Oscam, I'll type it up. Uh, projector LED lights, they're from, where have we get them? Online? Yeah, w, somewhere in WA. I think. WA, they ship now, they're like 350 bucks I think. Uh, really good, especially if you're running LED lights. As you know, the lights are very white and the old, this ones they're yellow so when you dip your high beam off you couldn't see anything so led lights to match uh we've got the iron man 12,000 pound winch which i'm really happy with we might upgrade the winch cable it is had a bit of abuse at cape york but um it's holding in there fine for now uh cb it's got a it's got an old uni den i think it's a uni den we'll check that when we're inside uh, so just a 40 channel one because our 80 channel one died and I'm not buying another one uh, What else we got on the front end? New light bar that you yeah. upgraded to. New light bars. Got a bit of moisture in this one. It's a bit mm -hmm. strange so we'll have to check that out. Probably the breather Okay, the roof racks. So they're just uh, Tigers 11 steel roof rack. Uh, the tradie rack that was like 350 bucks Oh geez, maybe eight years ago we bought that. Um, simple, easy, you know, if it wears out, we'll just buy a new one. But so far it's holding up pretty good. We've got uh, recovery boards from Vic Off-Road mounted to the side. We've got the Iron Man uh, shout awning. There's another video on that if you want to see that. Uh, it's pretty handy to have. We run two awnings, one rear one and one side rather than a 270. Basically our camper trailer has got a 270 awning So we don't need that on the car. So sometimes we just like the little one out for the cover the back for the fridge Sometimes we just want the side one. Sometimes we'll have both out But we can't hook up the trailer and have the big awning a big 270 degree awning on so for us That wasn't an option On the roof rack we run a hundred watt portable solar panel from that was from BCF We've got a roof bag, and inside the roof bag, we carry two double kayaks, four life jackets, four paddles, two extra inflatables for the kids, all our snorkeling gear, all our flippers, um, anything else water related goes up in there. And that way, if a little bit of moisture ever does come through, it's not a problem. It's not like your dry clothes or anything. So that's all water sports stuff up in there. Um, never had water come through it, but we haven't been in big heavy rain with the roof. Holy Magooly. It's gonna do it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's talk about the external. So we've got the dynamic rims. We've got, uh, they're 15 by eights. We've got the BFG all trains, they're only new. Really happy with how they sound on the highway and still plenty of traction from them. Uh, the BFG all trains, they're a 33, 12 and a half by 15. It's the old school size. Uh, you get a lot of flotation when you're down on 14 PSI. Uh, never had a tire pop off a rim uh, Downside with having the smaller rim and more rubber It does take a lot longer to pump up than if you had a 16 or 17 inch rim, but I'm old-school I like the look of them uh, especially with the chrome
We bought a sec set of second hand side steps for 50 bucks for the kids to help them in and out. I like them, they're very close to the panels, they're up high. Um, so that's there just for the kids and to stop a lot of stone damage. If you look real close, all the miles of outback travel, you'll see all these stone chips. So things due for a respray, there's no rust on it, but it is peppered with stone chips, so we'll get that done. All right, the rear end. So, like I said earlier, it's got the awning for the fridge that we got in the back. Reverse light on a three-way switch, so it can be on, off, or on when reverse comes on. Um, we've also looked, if you come closer with the camera, we've got a Lockwood lock here. This is a heavy-duty lock. You can put a padlock through the rear end here and lock these doors up so no one can get in there. So, just a bit of extra insurance. Uh, we've got the DO35 hitch on the back end. We've got solar input for the rear gun to the MPPT regulator up on top. We've got um, Anderson going to a separate fridge plug so we can run the fridge off the camper trailer lithium battery. And then we've got a power point going directly to the battery. So three different Andersons on the back there. They're tow. Uh, the trailer lights and the, the plug for the trailer lights is tucked up right underneath the hitch. It's a little bit hard to hook on sometimes, but we've never had issues with mud or getting it ripped off when we're forward driving, so that's a good thing. We've also got extended mud flaps to suit the lift to make it legal and also to stop a lot of rock damage. Uh, so on the back window, you probably see these little white tabs, but you don't see what they are. We've got uh, Perspex covers. Uh, similar to the side damage with the rocks, we've also had a whole heap of rocks hit the back. Uh, it's probably just a matter of time before we lose a window, so we've added this for a bit of extra protection. Um, so far, so good. Inside the back windows, uh, rather than buy the expensive guards uh, and the sun reflectors, We've made someone, this one I'll have to modify, this is the first weekend out and it's actually swelled a little bit in the heat, so I'm going to trim this one down. But they're just velcroed on and uh, we've tested it and they work a treat. It's actually a kid's mat, like a sleeping mat from uh, Kmart, I think it was, it was $10 a roll, two rolls we needed. Uh, there's a few other things I was going to do, other ways to do it, but um, that was very cost effective, very simple way of doing it. And it works a treat, protects the windows and it keeps the heat out. As you can see, it's got the reflective side on one, 10 mil of uh, high density foam on the other side and that's all it needs. All right, in the back. So normally the dog goes on this side. He's got a nice thick mattress. When he's not coming with us on a big trip, we'll probably have a couple of tubs in there with electrical gear, 240 volt gear for the caravan parks and stuff if we need, uh, or extra bags for swimming and stuff like that. Uh, left side's all our tools and spare parts and recovery gear. Um, we've got an air inflator, a full tool kit. We can pull apart the car and put the whole car back together with this tool kit. In here we've got spare plugs, wires, fuses, all that sort of stuff. Um, spare nuts and bolts. We've got a tree trunk protector, winch extension, a few other little pieces. We've got a Soft shackle, zip ties, grinder, back in there there's spare uh, fuel filters and then there's another box behind the toolbox full of more spare parts and just all the little stuff that you might need. Um, heat shrink, um, radiator, stop leak, uh, gasket goo, any of that that you might need on a big trip. When you're running around town you don't need a lot of the stuff but that's not what this car is set up for. This side's all the electrical gear, all our camera gear. We've got this little table we've made up, so we can just sit that on there. It's great, we can take the drone off, fly the drone off this, we'll put that down on the ground and stops all the dust coming onto your drone. Uh, the right side here, big first aid kit. Behind there is a 20 litre water tank from Iron Man. It's got an actual recessed tap so that won't get knocked off. And then above here, uh, we've got a little tub, we've got a grease gun in there, spare grease, spare filter for the snorkel, the pre-filter, 
some rags and things like that. We also run inside that toolkit before I forget, we got some uh, welding wires to make an arc welder and we can do that with jumper leads behind the seat. Fridge slide, Dun and Watson. Uh, fridge is a 65 litre dual zone Waco. If you have a look at the clearance, the Dun and Watson was the only fridge slide with the clearance we have with this fridge. Cover that Yeah. So she just clears. Only just. <laughs> the sides to keep the dog off the fridge, they're just ones I made out of plywood. Drilled a heap of holes in them to add ventilation. Uh, and a cargo barrier up to there, stop everything falling forward to the kids. All right, in the rear here, now we've got everything out of the way, I can show you. Um, in this pocket, we carry the sand pegs for the awnings. We carry a heap of spare parts and oils. The straps are in here. Of course, they're tangled up. WD-40. We've got brake fluid, clutch fluid. We've got grease. And inside here, where the jack normally is, we've taken the jack out and the cradle for it. And inside there, we've got two sets of belts, two sets of hoses, spare line for the for things like fuel line, uh, heater hose, um, water lines for the tanks, the spare hoses for all those, all in there. It's also inside that guard. So it's all inside sort of this area here, right down from there to the forward of the wheel arch, fits all that. And in this side, underneath this panel, we carry our spare wheel bearings for the patrol, spare seals, soldering iron, uh, test light, um, windscreen repair kit, uh, spare hose clamps, all inside this pocket here. All right, so in the front, we've added the door pockets. Never had them in the DX. Uh, we've got tint window tint. We've got a couple of uh, phone holders. Extra USB up behind the windscreen. Or in front of the windscreen on the pillar. GoPro mount. We've also added a GoPro mount on the mirror, on the mount. So when, just when we're traveling and we're not using the GoPro, it'll go up there out of the way. Uh, UHF, yeah, it's a Uniden UHF. So an old-fashioned 40 watt channel. The new one we bought died within weeks in the Simpson Desert, and until this one dies, I'm not buying a new one. Bugger them. Uh, we've also added an extra USB inside the center console, so we can have phones in there charging up out of sight, out of the sun. We've got the switches here for the locker and the compressor. We added a little. We added a little tub here, uh, just for storage. Put a big coffee cup in there, and we've also added dual cup holders here. Um, inside, we've also got a switch here for the fuel pump to transfer fuel from the reserve tank into the main. And we've also got a little switch here for the aircon fan. So if it's really hot going, and a real slow full drive track. Sometimes up the hills, she'll get a bit warm. I'll just flick that on. That just helps with a bit of airflow under the bonnet. Uh, HEMA GPS, and that's on an old mount that we had for a reverse camera. So everything's off the windscreen, which we like, so you can put up your um, your wind shade, your sunshade without having to take things off. Got another uh, phone holder over here for the driver. All right, on the driver's side, we got the trailer brakes up here, which I really like having them close or up high, easy to reach. We've had to use that once before in an emergency and it saved our bacon. We were on a big slide in Tassie and that was the only thing to straighten us up. Uh, volt gauge on a three-way switch. So we can switch it between batteries. It'll only show you the second battery right now which is running the fridge which is pretty good on that 12.8 volts being running the fridge all day boost gauge and down here we've got an electronic pyro gauge which we're going to tear out and put a 
an old fashioned sort of, uh, I think it's a Vidu pyro gauge up here. Uh, turbo timer, which is mandatory. And the driver's seat has been modified. We took it out and took it to an auto upholsterer. It's had three layers, three different layers of foam inside it. Um, they added a lumbar support inside, not just one in the um, inside the seat cover. It's actually inside the chair, which is really good. And they've built the sides out a little bit more for some support. So I can spend about eight to ten hours in the seat and um, not get a sore back, which is fantastic. All right, so in the rear, we've added tiny little uh, four-inch speakers. They're quite good for the kids. The DXs don't have any rear speakers, so that was a good spot for the kids to hear the music. I also added some door pockets as well for their books. They've both got TVs. They're from Harvey Norman. They're quite a good size. In the middle, we run this nice bag in here with multiple pockets for usually their drink bottles, food, some games and toys, they're colouring in pencils, DVDs for their um, TVs. Down here we run one of the ammunition cases and we store our big camera in there when we're driving. Easy to get to from the front seat. Kids can stand on this box get to get in the front without wrecking the camera. Cargo barrier. There's the water tank that I was saying earlier. With the hose fire extinguisher and you might see here the black uh, cord bit of elastic and that's for shade for the kids and also somewhere to dry your towels when you're driving when you're traveling there's nothing worse than having your towels all bunched up and nowhere to dry them so we can set hang two sets of towels up on each side dry the towels and give the kids some shade as well while we're traveling so under the seat we run a high lift jack, like I said earlier we don't run a bottle jack. Uh, we've got the hooks to grab onto the rims to lift the rims up. Front end we can lift up by the ball bar. The rear end we usually, if we had to, run a ratchet strap from the diff housing to the chassis. Otherwise with the patrols you get a lot of droop in the rear end. You've got to jack the car mid off the ground before the wheel comes off. So we also use that because we can set it up as a winch. We can pop the tires off the beads uh, and we can also use it to maneuver the trailer around. Lift the front end up when the jockey wheel's too short, push the trailer sideways, winch the trailer backwards or sideways as well. So saving weight having two jacks, we run a high lift jack in the back of the trailer we also have a jack stand so when we are working on the car or trailer jack it up with the high lift jack and use the jack stand which is just a lightweight sort of slide in tube over the other tube with the pin through it underneath uh, so like i said earlier the front diff it's got the arb air locker it's got three inch superior coils they're the extra heavy duty uh, in my opinion it's probably lifted at more like four four and a half inches very solid not a lot of down travel in them plenty of app travel but it handles the load really well fully loaded we don't get a big sway like we did with the softer coils uh, but the downside is yeah less down travel which isn't a problem for us we can change that later on if we want uh, it's had the front end rebuilt all new C uh, CVs uh, bearings seals and just like any other patrol after a while they leak again it's got all new brakes for it like i said rotors pads calipers rebuilt also run sway bar disconnects front and rear diff breathers we run the front caster plates uh it's the old-fashioned way of doing it and that's what i had on the old one so pretty happy with that so we did that again rather than the drop boxes uh Back then when I did it, it was a matter of budget more than anything. Underneath, it's also got a 75 litre sub tank from LRA. Like I said, 3 inch exhaust pipe from Badezit Exhaust. The rear end, it runs the airbags from Airbag Man. And it also has a superior top tower brace kit 
because that's one of the weaknesses on the patrols when you load them up, the top tower can bend. So we've got that kit in there before, um, before it does any damage. Front and rear adjustable panard rods. Uh, we've uh, braced the rear lower control arms on, on, the, on the back end. Uh, the top end has got a, one from Superior with the bend in it to clear the tank. And the other side is just a standard one, new bushes in it. The rear ends had new bearings put in the, um, the axles as well. And all new bushes throughout the car. Alright everyone, so that's the GQ Patrol. That's a quick run around. Any questions, hit us up. If you've got any tips for us, for changes, especially for touring and overlanding, definitely let us know. Hit us up in the comments. Uh, also on Instagram or Facebook, send us a photo of your patrol. We love GQ patrols. Even GUs or G60s, MQs. Even the new patrols, I reckon they look pretty cool. Especially the V8 ones like the petrol V8s. They are pretty, I don't know, they're pretty cool. So yeah, send us a photo. Also like, subscribe, follow. Um, hopefully you enjoy what's coming up this year. And um, yeah, we'll see you down the track somewhere. We might see you around Australia somewhere. Cheers guys.